Hello everyone and welcome to the WT Sports Network here on GoGloVesGo.com. Zach Barnes with you today for this week's edition of Heard That. WT Men's Soccer with a big week this last weekend with big Thursday-Saturday games. Really the biggest thing was just that the fact that we put two really solid performances back to back and showed some high level of consistency. Um, we defended very well. I think um, between the two games we gave up less than 10 shots total between the two teams. Um, and when you can <coughs> limit those type of chances, it gives you, obviously gives yourself, put yourself in a chance to win. First on Thursday, the Buffs saw Rogers State for the first time, and they ended up with a 3-0 win over the Hillcats. A little pass attempt, and a shot is good! I mean, that's barely, what, three and a half minutes or so in, and the Buffs are going to score the first goal of the game. You missed that one, there's a tough opportunity for the Buffs, and they've got it! You had a little chip shot up in front of the goal. But that's Evan Bozeman who comes up with the goal before it goes out of bounds. Crosses deflected away. Shot opportunity for Gabe Williams. He's got it. Gabe Williams with a goal on the deflection. And on Saturday, it took overtime to settle a 1-0 win for the Buffs over the Jets of Newman with that last goal coming with about 21 seconds left. You've got a runner for the Buffs. Gives another pass to Ivan Uwala. He's got a shot, chips it up, goes off the crossbar. Southers has another chance. This one goes in, and Southers is going to get the game-winning goal. The two shutouts over the weekend also allowed Patrick Satori to be voted as the Heartland Conference Player of the Week. Bucks with a big week this week, starting on Thursday with a match against the number six-ranked St. Edwards University on Thursday night. Well, St. Edwards has, has kind of turned into a bit of a dogfight last couple of years. Um, it's two teams that uh, I would think probably don't really like each other right now on the field. Um, kind of started a couple of years ago when they came up here and uh, broke Gabe's foot in a game and kind of got out of hand. And then last year we went down there when they were you know, rolling and we won. And, and so, yeah, I expect a very <clears throat> excuse me physical, um, very very competitive, high energy type of game. That game will start at seven. Be sure to make your way out there. For one, this is a big game with postseason implications. Also, before you go out there, be sure to download the Buff Nation Fan Rewards app because that game will be worth 40 points. Then on Saturday, the Buffs will see Dallas Baptist University in another Heartland Conference game. My big concern is depending on how that game goes on Thursday is just getting the players emotionally up to play Saturday, you know, again. Um, DPU has not done that well. I think they're four and seven right now, and giving up a lot of goals. And um, so the trick is really to we've been teaching, saying all years, just one game at a time, and work on getting ready to play um, St. Edwards, and then let the chips fall where they are and get ready to play Dallas Baptist. Women's soccer also with a big week this last week. First, they started with a kind of a goofy schedule, having a Wednesday game against Eastern New Mexico. That night, the Lady Buffs would not be stopped as they walked out with a big 4-1 to win over Eastern. Then on Friday, the Lady Buffs took a road trip to Wichita Falls and saw the Midwestern State Mustangs. Then Wichita Falls, the Buffs ended up getting a big 2-1 to win. Up next for the Lady Buffs, they will flip the schedule, start off on the road against UT Permian Basin and Angelo State on Friday and Sunday. WT Football had their homecoming game this last Saturday against Texas A&M Kingsville. Avalina started off really hot in the first half and ended up taking a big lead in the halftime. With Ethan Brinkley going out in the second quarter, Ben Arbuckle had to come in and lead the Buffs in the second half. Even though the Buffs had a solid second half, the deficit was just too much to overcome. We didn't play good enough early enough. You know, you can't spot them the amount of play. You can't be 44-6 before you decide to play. I mean, that's just not going to happen. You know, I mean, so uh, hopefully. Uh, we're a little humbled by it and a little embarrassed and you know we find a way to get better on Tuesday at practice. Up next for the Buffs, they'll hit the road on Saturday to take on the Aggies of Oklahoma Panhandle State University. They've been in every ball game, played really well, played good against Angelo, had a bunch of turnovers uh, and they probably had two or three other possessions where they dropped picks that they could have had and so they're a team that's uh, you know playing really well. They beat Arkansas Pine Bluff earlier in the year. Uh, and you know they're a full scholarship school. Uh, it's played Sam well. I think they scored 28, 27 points, something like that against them. But played well against them down there on the road. You know the tough thing with them is change offenses back and forth every week. You know Gaskamp does a great job of scheming up stuff. 
Uh, and so, and then defensively, they're, we're going to see a lot of pressure defensively. They played a lot of zero coverage and stuff a couple weeks ago. And uh, after our pass protection rolls this week, you know, we got to really clean that up because I bet they come after and try to heat us up and see if we can get uncomfortable again. Lady Buffs played three games this past week. First, they started off with a road trip on Friday, Saturday, where they saw Texas A&M Kingsville and Arkansas Ford Smith. Lady Buffs went 0-2 on that road trip, losing in five sets to the Javelinas, and then losing in four to Fort Smith. And the worst part is, is Kingsville's good. That's the best Kingsville team we've ever played. Um, so Tanya down there is doing really good. But the reality is, is that was probably one of the worst losses just because of how we lost. We just had players not show up and do fundamentals. So Kingsville's a very good team. Fort Smith is one of the top three teams in the region again. And again, we were up 18-13 and lost. So it's not like it's impossible. We just got to accept the fact that we don't have that super stud to bail us out of trouble. Once we do that, we're going to be A-OK. -okay. Lady Buffs last night, though, with a solid rebound game, taking a three-set to one victory over Lubbock Christian. Up next, the Lady Buffs will be on the road once again as they will play three games throughout this next week. On the 14th and 15th, the Lady Buffs will go down to Texas A&M Commerce and Texas Women's in big conference matchups, where on the 18th, they will see the Eastern New Mexico Greyhounds once again. Yeah, Women's has got uh, two really good middle blockers. They're, it, this, this weird year, and I don't know enough about football, but I remember reading something about the conference about a week or two ago in the paper where the record's very misleading on how good some of these teams are. Women's is really good, and uh, Commerce, you know, beat Kingsville, and it's really weird. They're almost like us. Like it's they're the top, and then they'll falter themselves. And so the, the, the struggle is, is that uh, women's plays in a very big air gym opposite of the box, and we seem to adjust struggle adjusting to that at first. And then uh, you know, with commerce, they're much like us, where they have to have the whole team show up, and if they do, they're as good as anybody. So um, we have some advantages that we think we can exploit. And again, it goes back to those girls wanna. I mean, that's the message if people want to rise up and take advantage of those opportunities. Both men's and women's cross country got to race at home this last weekend at the Buffalo Stampede on Friday. First race was the Lady Buffs, where they ended up finishing second as a team. Kristen Elizaldi with a top finish for the Buffs, finishing in an overall fourth place. Uh, I was pleased with the girls and how they competed this weekend. Uh, most of them shaved off a minute over their altitude time, which was kind of our goal after running uh, at Denver last weekend. So, um, you know, that, that course is a little bit rough right now, and so for them to walk away with a minute of improvement, I was pleased with that. Then on the men's side, the men ended up taking a third place at the Buffalo Stampede. Jacob Sugers with the best finish for the Buffs in sixth place. But while some of the guys were back here at home racing at the Buffalo Stampede trying to earn those last conference spots, the other portion of the team was at Fort Hayes. Up in Fort Hayes, the Buffs ended up with a third place overall finish, where Jeff Kuchumba with a second place individual finish. Oh, uh, well, you know, out in Fort Hayes, we finally got seven guys across the line in the same race, so I think that's a step in the right direction. Uh, you know, it, we had kind of two separate storylines going this weekend with uh, the guys here at, uh, at home fighting for uh, the last three conference spots on the roster and then basically uh, an opportunity to get our full squad out there for the first time and running at some great competition in Adams State and Western State and are both the top ten nationally ranked teams. And uh, I feel like we, uh, we accomplished what we needed to this weekend. Up next for both men's and women's cross country teams will head to Texas A&M Commerce, where we will see the LSC Championships. But fans, thank you for joining us this week on Heard That. Fans, don't forget to come out to soccer tomorrow night against St. Edwards. That game will be worth 40 points, opposed to the normal 10 points on the Buff Nation Fan Rewards app. But again, thank you for joining us this week. For the WT Sports Network on GoBuffsGo.com, I am Zach Barnes, and we will see you next week.